So you have fresh mealworms and don't know what to do with them. You can feed them to your chickens live, but sometimes it's easier to have a stash of dried worms. So how do you do it? Hey y'all, I'm Renee and welcome to Tater Town. A few months ago, I made a video on how to raise mealworms. I love doing this for my chickens because I know exactly what those mealworms are eating and it's less expensive than buying bags of store-bought dried mealworms. It's not super time consuming and I really do enjoy the experience. But how do you go from this to this? It's pretty easy and you don't need any fancy equipment other than a freezer and an oven. But you most certainly can use other methods of drying like a dehydrator or a freeze dryer. In fact, if I had either one of those, that's how I would do it. But since I don't, I'm gonna use my oven. If you find this or any of my videos helpful, please hit that like, subscribe, and the notification bell. It really does help. First things first, you have a few choices to prep your mealworms. Once you remove the largest worms from your farm, you can put them in a container and place them in your freezer. I give them at least 24 hours in the freezer just to make sure they're no longer alive. You could freeze them for around three hours, but they are probably still alive at that point, just not moving around so much. So I personally prefer not to do that. I go with the 24 hours. Now mine have been in the freezer for a long time, probably a month or two. And I do that since I like to wait until I have a large amount. That way I'm not having to bake them as frequently since it does occupy my oven space for a few hours. Another thing you can do after freezing them and before baking them is you can blanch them. Simply add them to boiling water for about 60 seconds and then rinse them in cold water. This is helpful to ensure any unwanted microbes are killed. I don't do this step because I find it more difficult to get the added moisture out during baking and you want them completely dry so they last longer and don't become rancid or moldy. If there's more moisture, that means more baking time. And since the worms are so tiny, they burn a lot easier. I would, however, do this if I didn't raise the larvae myself. I simply take them out of the freezer. I have a couple other containers in there right now as well. This is one. And I'm going to place a sheet of parchment paper on this. The reason I'm using parchment paper is because it helps to dry them quicker and it also makes cleaning your baking sheet a lot easier. You want the worms to be spread out in a single layer so they can dry thoroughly. The more space between the worms, the better. Now I actually have a lot more, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a second pan set up. I still have more left, so I'm probably gonna be baking for a little while. I'll put these back in the freezer until I'm ready after these ba this batch is done. Now just put them in the oven at about 170 for one to two hours. It could be more or less than that depending upon the size and the moisture content of the worms. If this is the first time you're doing it, I definitely check every 30 minutes or so just to make sure they're crispy and also that they're not being burned to a crisp. You may have trouble because some ovens nowadays don't go below 170. If you can get it below 170, um, I would say 150, 160. For example, mine doesn't go below 170, so that's why I'm using that number. Once the worms are completely dry in the oven, remove them from the pan and let them cool on your countertop. It's a little tricky. Worm overboard. So I'm gonna let these cool and don't put them in any kind of container until they're completely cool or else you'll risk moisture buildup and that can result in mold. Once they cool, you can put them in the container of your choice. I usually store mine in the refrigerator to extend the shelf life, but you can certainly store them in your pantry. 
I just try to keep them out of excessively warm areas the same way you would with any dried food like beef jerky or anything like that. Remember, the warmer the environment, the shorter the shelf life. I like to use mason jars like I do for everything else just because they, they're glass, they tend not to absorb smells. But because I wanna keep them as dry as possible, I like using um, these food grade silica gel desiccants. So I'm gonna add one. The cool thing about these is you can reset them, they're reusable. So you can microwave them when they've absorbed all the moisture they can and reuse them. I'm gonna put one in there and just start putting the mealworms in this glass jar as I keep dumping them everywhere. They're actually pretty good. Kind of nutty. You want to try one, Dad? Uh, of course, like I said, you can eat these too. They're actually pretty good. They kind of have a nutty flavor. Of course, if I were making them for myself, I'd probably roast them in a little bit of oil and add some salt. A word of caution for those of you with food allergies. If you have an allergy to shrimp or shellfish, you may wanna skip trying these as you could also have an allergic reaction to them or other arthropods. Now all you have to do is wade through the chicken masses as you give them these tasty little treats that you made. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have a different method of drying yours. I'd love to hear about it. Again, if you've got a dehydrator or a freeze dryer, those are gonna be your best bets. But the oven works in a pinch. And thanks for cooking with me here on Tater Town. I usually store mine. Never, never ends, never fails. I'm recording. Can you sit down while I do this? I know. Sit down just while I do this. Oh, okay. Why? Where are you going? Oh, I love you. Thank you. Yes, I do. Thank you.